Hello folks and welcome. So Linux Mint 22.1 has been released on beta. Beta, And I will be uh, giving you uh, a couple of things of what's new. I'll show you uh, my version of it and I'll show you what's published. And toward the latter part of the video I'll show you an easy link that you can uh, click on to download not only the Cinnamon desktop but also except CE and MATE for Linux Mint 22.1 beta, beta. All right, so this is Cinnamon version 6.4, uses a 6.8 series Linux kernel, and you can see my hardware here. Now I'm filming in a very special mode. The desktop is in 4K, but I'm filming in 1080. Adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. Uh, this command is called NeoFetch. It's been around for a while and it's still active with Linux Mint 22.1. All right, I just have a simple desk list. So, so today, Thursday, 12th December, December 12th, however you want to view it, um, we can read Clem's blog. Uh, Clem is in charge of Linux Mint and his team. He is the only one with the official release information of when 22.1 will be officially released. Code name, I want to say, Exia, Exia, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, historically, somewhere around Christmas time, historically. But again, he is in charge of that, so don't ask me when. All right, so more importantly, though, what's new? I'm going to talk about what's published and also some of my take. The other thing that I'm going to point out to you is the, um, well, system requirements. What's recommended and what's bare minimum. You know, whenever we deal with the bottom end stuff is what you get. Um, so recommended is usually what I would, you know, stick with. Something better than maybe that kind of screen resolution. All right, so I'm using an AMD graphics card today, not an NVIDIA, just to let you know, and I'll give you some of that information a little bit later. All right, we can talk about uh, what's new first and also what's printed and I'll also physically show you some of these things. So um, package managers. Now, one thing that uh, if you decide to download uh, 22.1 Xia, however that's pronounced, uh, it does not install Synaptic Package Manager. At least this beta copy did not. And I understand that a lot of the tools with the package managers is being revamped because they're quite old. Okay, so that's one of the reasons I think that there's a lot of information regarding that here. All right, update manager. Sometimes uh, people have difficulties with uh, management. So um, we have um, some multi-threading and multi-processing being at least looked at. That's a good thing. Whenever I see power modes, I always think of laptops. All right, in any case, uh, power management. And uh, you can read this if you're using the other two desktops. And uh, Nightlight, I'm going to show you. However, this the uh, recording software does not pick this up and neither does the screenshot tool, but I will describe it for you. So Cinnamon version 6.4. The other day, I want to say a week or two ago, I did a video on an Arch-based distribution that also uses Cinnamon 6.4. Okay, so it's a rolling distribution. Manjaro, you may have heard of it. So I did some screenshots there. And they're the same screenshots as in here. All right, except I'm gonna carry it a little further today, of course. All right, so a little softer edges on a lot of things. Here's the, uh, the shutdown one. All right, you may not think these are stupendous, and but more importantly, I'm just showing you, there's been some nice improvements is what I'm getting at. And there's a lot of stuff under the hood also. Uh, the Wayland capability I'm going to talk about also, and it's done from your login screen. And I'll, I'll let you see with the icon that you need to click on when you're doing that. All right, so a lot of things are under the hood. A lot of improvements. Uh, this screenshot here I thought was quite interesting because I did a video on something about a month or two ago where I was showing how to install some of the older versions for wallpapers or backgrounds and then make a subfolder. And apparently someone else did also on the Linux Mint team. So I just wanted to let you see what that looks like. 
So LTS, Long-Term Support Strategy 2029, okay? I already talked about the minimum specs. I'm gonna scroll through this rather quickly, the release notes. If you are fond of virtual boxes, which I am not, uh, you may wanna check some of the information out here, okay? Uh, Grand Unified Bootloader, Snap Store is disabled, has been for a while, I believe. And uh, anyways, lots of different information down here. Um, some of you folks that are fond of ZFS, um, it's been removed from the installer. It's been removed from the installer. I'll leave it at that. Uh, this is an older screenshot of the 17.3. Um, uh, just It is what it is. And um, if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card, it will install the open source driver and you'll be allowed to install the proprietary if you like. If you're using an AMD, it, it's automatically installed. AMD graphics card. All right. So now I'm going to physically go through this stuff with you. <clears throat> so we can start at the bottom. We can start at the top. It really doesn't matter, but I will start at the bottom, starting with driver manager and let you see that it won't find anything. But if you did have an NVIDIA card, you will see open source drivers installed and then whatever model number that you're currently using have some options for drivers. All right. I'm not going to open this, but this is GUFW or UFW. The firewall is the same as the standard version of 22 and it comes disabled by default. If you're going to use any file sharing, I have lots of videos on that. Um, I'll show you how to import those firewall rules in those videos. Uh, the login window, I will log in here. So Bob the Penguin is our user for today. It's just a funny name, I know. But uh, your alignment for your login screen is on the left. So you will see this symbol here. Uh, let me actually right click and do this. So this symbol here is the cinnamon logo. On your login screen, you will see that next to your name. When you click that, you can select the Wayland environment. You on your login screen. That's the logo you're looking for. All right, just wanted to make mention of that. Your alignment screen is default to the left. The center or the right is your choice. This is not new, but I wanted to make mention of the Wayland desktop environment. So software sources is coming from this package area for Mint, Axia, Zaya, and of course Ubuntu. It doesn't make mention of FlatHub though, so I will open up Software Manager. Another name for Software Manager is Mint Install. This is 835, also known as Software Manager. So to give you an example, here's one from FlatHub. See, it's not mentioned in the software sources in here. But uh, more importantly, didn't mean to click that, but um, you can find that information here or you can do it also here. All right, you get that so far? Okay, but it doesn't make mention of that FlatHub. FlatHub is where that's coming from. A lot of Linux distros use this also. Some people always ask me the question, what is Flatpak software anyways? Uh, generally, it's a larger download than most, and it's self-contained, if you want to call it that. It's a big package. It doesn't really require a lot of things from your system. And that's why the developers created Flatpak software, so that can be run on several different types of Linux desktops, for instance. So there is also this setting here, which hasn't changed from the previous version, is show unverified Flatpaks not recommended is off by default. There might be a reason why you need to turn that on if you're looking for something that you think is okay to actually install. But again, generally this is off by default. The other thing you will not find installed on this beta copy is Synaptic Package Manager. You can see it's not installed. So I'm not sure if that's going to be long term, but again, as I pointed out, um, the um, Linux Mint team is working with some of these old package tools. And there's quite a few of these package managing tools that are quite old. And Debian, I believe, is also struggling with that also. You know, this stuff was built a long time ago. 
but I wanted to make mention to you that is not installed Synaptic. So you can still use Terminal to install software or you can use Software Manager. All right, I'm going to continue now. All right, we stop there. Um, let's go up to sound. So over amplification used to be a setting over here. I also talked about this setting on my arch base video that I did a week ago. All right, so it's in the same location. So this represents 100%. I'm currently at 71. So if I wanted to exceed that, uh, that's 100. And now it's 105. I'm not really fond about overdriving speakers at all, but I'll leave it up to you. The option is here, okay? Your standard sounds are also in here. Login sound, don't like it, click something different. This is not new, but I thought I'd tell you that you can disable those if you don't like that noise. So I talked about the login screen. I talked about Synaptic not being installed. Um, uh, LibreOffice, just briefly going to make mention of it, I'm not going to open it, is 24.2. Alright, so let's talk about some of the other settings. Action Tools, Applets, and Desklets. So on the um, Applets, it has the greatest amount of tools in the download area. Those are uh, 215 of them. The um, Action Tools, or Toys, um, a lot of people do not understand what they do. Well, these all have an interaction with your whole system. To give you an example, if I right click on the screen, you can see I have desklets here. Now, what if I turn this off? Well, you're not, you're not going to see that anymore. All right, so that's one of the reasons for that. Linux Mint gives you the option of turning some tools off. So what's in this area here for the action tools or toys? Also 56 items. 56, 215 desklets are 56. The current calendar clock I'm using by this developer here, not this one. This is also customizable. And generally, desklets always appear on this side and you can move them. And then you can also lock them. All right. Um, If you're worried about printers, you can certainly install regular ones. I happen to be the type of person that don't like to deal with that nonsense. So I have my uh, wireless network printer sitting there for all systems. I don't care what Linux distributions I have, which I have plenty. And I also have uh, one Microsoft system. And my wife has a Mac and we have iPhones and they all print from this thing. It's a laser color printer. I've been using it for years. It was configured a long time ago. And Linux Mint finds this every time that I install a new distribution without any problems. All right, so power management, it was another uh, item, which is power mode, which is currently balanced and you can do power saver also. It does have a lot of reductions on some of your system components when you do that. Full information is in the release notes if you're curious. So, the uh, backgrounds, uh, again, you have your standard ones. Now you got the one that's called wallpapers, and they're a mix. I also showed uh, different videos on how you can do your own mix of folders. You still have Wilma in here, and of course, you have your custom pictures folder that you can also select wallpapers or backgrounds. Standard tools still apply if you want to play your backgrounds as a slideshow from whatever current folder you're at. That'll just keep changing depending on the time frame you got. So if you put it in one minute, so every minute is going to change the wallpaper. And these are no longer clickable. However, I can change the folder. And it starts picking that from the first picture depending on where the setting is at. Okay, turning that off, going backwards. I'm at 14 minutes, so um, let me just do a recap on this. So some of the newer stuff was, again, Nightlight was one of them. Your sound amplification is now on the main screen of output down here at the bottom. The um, login screen, again, is not new, but make, make you aware that you need to look for this logo right here. 
in your login screen, which is the Cinnamon logo, if you want to try out the Wayland environment. You just click that logo on your login screen and then sign in normally. You'll see it. It'll, it'll say Wayland on it. All right. Um, and then I talked about Libre. I talked about the Synaptic Package Manager not being installed by default on this beta. And I, I can't answer the question if that's going to be um, on the official release, if they're going to activate that by default. But you can certainly install that, it looks like, without a problem. General settings in here, again, 22.1 currently in beta. Cinnamon version is currently 6.4.2, but 6.4 is more what we're concerned about. And it uses a 6.8 series Linux kernel. Again, that's not the bare minimum specifications. I showed that in an earlier slide and what the bare minimum specs are. Now for the folks that are interested in downloading this, there's two ways you can do this. You can go through my own YouTube site. If you are a subscriber already, I have almost 500 videos. My mission statement is here. I do not get paid to make videos. And more importantly, here is the DistroWatch link if you want to go through that route. All of my videos are keyword indexed. So all you got to do is type in keywords if you're curious. And I have lots of tips and tricks. It's not only Linux Mint that I have. I have others also. All right, so in either case, cheap plug aside, um, I'm going to, um, I clicked it too quickly, so let me give it a second here. Uh, you can wait until Linux Mint 22.1 is officially released. Now, if you're gonna ask me if there's a migration mode for that, uh, in the past, I know Clem had created a tool in here. I don't know if he'll do that again, but if not, it'll be regular instructions about upgrading. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. That's there. I'm not part of his team, FYI. But in either case, if you want to download the beta version, you can go to DistroWatch and you'll find this article right here. Currently, as of today's date, which is December 12th, it's currently at the top. Linux Mint 22.1 Cinnamon Beta is right here. Linux Mint 22.1 XFCE Beta is here. Linux Mint 22.1 Mate Traditional Desktop Beta is also here. Along with the release notes, what's new, and etc. What's new, a release announcement, and release notes is what I'm getting at. You can also uh, click this, and if you're curious about um, the Linux Mint, I don't use the popularity factor, but I really am surprised that this got all the way to the top. I'm not really surprised, but uh, you know, they're, they're ranking it as number one. That's, I really don't use that, to be honest with you. It is nice to be considered that on any website, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so Linux Mint 22, not 22.1, is currently available here. If you're looking at all versions, including LMDE6, um, you can look at all versions. LMDE6 is at the bottom of the screen. Okay, that's also a Cinnamon desktop. It's Debian based. Okay, so 22 is here. The newer version will be coming out shortly with 22.1. And you can already see that this is the current release version called Wilma. And it's gonna be supported until 2029. 21.3 is going to be supported until 2027, all the 21 series. And when you hit 20.3, that will be expiring next year. So if any of you folks are on these versions here, Una or Uma, you may want to consider a migration path. Start finding out how you can save your files. And more importantly, then you can do a fresh install because if you're on a lot of these older versions, I highly recommend fresh installs. And I have lots of backup videos. Lots of different ways you can back up your personal files. Thank you for watching.